final one, I'm going to double check. If I highlight 14, the last number that I entered, it says my L1, that's my first list. I've got 51 data entries, which is correct, because I've got 50 states plus the District of Columbia. So that's good. I've got them all in. So in order to put these in order, I'm going to follow these steps right here in step two. So I'm going to start with going to stat again. You don't have to go back to the home screen. You can just push stat. And then under edit, now we're going to go down to number two, which is sort A. And that just means sort ascending. Enter. And then you have to tell, tell it what you want to sort ascending. And for us, that's L1. Um, if you look down here above your one, in, mine's in yellow, but it says an L1 right here. That's the um, way for you to reference that first list that you put in. So I'll hit second one, and then L1 should show up on my screen. And then if you hit enter, it just says done, but it doesn't show you anything. You need to actually go back into your um, list. So if you go to stat, edit, under L1, now we've got everything in order, um, in numerical order. and L1 in order. So now I can do my seven link plot a little bit faster. Um, if I look at my numbers here, uh, if I just look at Alabama and Arkansas, they both start with 14. This one has a 0.1, this one has a 0.3. Um, if I look at this decimal, that kind of um, separates it for me. So the number after the decimal, that's going to be my leaf. And the number before is going to be my stem. So for the first three, 14 is my stem. And then I've got a stem of 17 and then 12. If there's not a decimal after it, this is just going to be a CLC zero. And so I'm going to put those all um, down here. <coughs> my smallest stem, if you look at your list, is 8. So that's why we started with 8. If we scroll, oops, not that one, scroll all the way down. It's a 17, so that's why we have to go all the way down here to 17. I'm going to write all of the numbers even if none of them have any leaves associated with them. Starting with the first one, it was 8.1. Right? 8.1. So um, for my stems, I'm not going to do the unordered stems because I've already got them in order in my calculator. So I'll just do 8.1, and that's going to be um, all the leaves I have for that stem. And then for 9, there's no number after the decimal, but like I said, that's just going to be a 0. So I'll put a 0 for that one. If we come to the tens. We have 10.2, and then a 10.5. So right next to the 2, I'm just going to write a 5 right next to it. I'm not going to put a comma or a space or anything like that. I'm just going to write all three of those numbers right back to back. Um, and that's why you don't want to have more than one digit for your leaf, because um, then you won't know if that's supposed to be like a 25 or 57. Each one of those leaves represents one number. So here the 2. It means that if our stem is um, 10, I have three numbers, one where the leaf is 2, one where the leaf is 5, one where the leaf is 7. So we'll just write them back to back. You don't have to separate them out with commas. If we do our 11s, um, we've got 11.5. It's written twice, so we have that entry two times in our data set. So under 11, we're going to write a 5, but we're going to write the 5 twice to indicate that that number shows up twice. So if there is repetition, <coughs> just make sure you repeat that number two times right here. So there are two numbers, or sorry, two data entries um, that have a stem of 11. Both of them have a leaf of 5. Then we can move on to our 12s. So for 12, we have a 0. 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4. Okay, how many fours do we have? Four fours, okay. Four fours. Seven and two eights. Thirteen. 
15, we have 0, 1, 3, 4, If you want to go through and just from instead of using your calculator for each number put the stem in the correct spot and once you've done that just be sure you go through and do the extra step where you order the stems um, that's another way you can do it if you don't want to order it in your calculator that's fine. Um, all right so uh, these are kind of nice because they kind of also tell you what the shape of the distribution is going to be like but you also have the option of getting back the original um, data values, the raw data values, where if you just have a histogram, it's nice and you can see the shape of it, but you can't tell what the individual numbers were. This one, you can actually see the individual numbers. And actually, if you tilt your head a little bit to the right, um, the shape of it is going to look just like a, if you were to do a histogram, um, but it's just tilted on its side a little bit. So you still get that same basic shape. If you do tilt your head to the right, you can see it's unimodal. We've got this mode right here in the middle that's taller. It tapers off on each side. This is actually going to be a bell-shaped or a normal distribution that we like. It's nice and symmetric and unimodal. Um, so that's the advantage of stem and leaf plots. They're not used as often as histograms, but it does have that extra advantage where you can go through and say, well, my 12.4 is the one that showed up most often. Um, well, I also got 14.1 that showed up quite a bit, too. So you can actually see what the numbers are, whereas the histogram, you just know what the classes and the frequencies are, not the individual numbers themselves. Okay. So um, the problem is...